In this video, we're going to talk about friction. We will learn the difference between static and kinetic friction, and then we're also going to learn how to calculate friction. Friction is a force that's exerted by a surface on an object. It's often thought that friction opposes motion, although that's not always going to be the case. Friction is dependent on the type of object and on the type of surface that the ob object is moving along. We're talking about the material things are made of. So for example, ice is going to have lower friction than rubber. The other thing that friction depends on is the degree to which an object is pressed onto the surface. In other words, we're talking about the mass of the object. The greater the mass of the object, the more pressed into the surface the object is going to be. And this is due to the force of gravity, because the force of gravity, or the weight of the object, is greater if the object has more mass. Now what we're really concerned with here is the force that the surface is exerting on the object. So what we're talking about here is the normal force. Let me show you what the normal force looks like. If we have an object, and I'm going to draw a free body diagram here, that's resting on the surface, we have the force of gravity, if this object is stationary, pushing the object downwards into the surface, and then opposing that force is going to be called the normal force. And this is due to Newton's third law. So the normal force is going to be the force of the surface pushing up against the object and holding it up. Now the type of material, again, is very important as well. To differentiate between different materials, we use something called the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is indicated by this Greek letter right here. This is the Greek letter mi, although some pronounce it mu. This is a constant that's going to be different for every combination of materials. So a low friction material will have a very low value for me, and a high friction will have a very large value. We'll look at some examples of these coefficients in a minute, but let's look at how we can calculate friction. We're going to need both of these variables in our equation, so we need the coefficient of friction, and we need the normal force because friction is dependent on both of them. So here's what the equation looks like. Friction, and we use the lowercase f, is going to be equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And that's our equation to find the force of friction. Okay, so let's look at some of the examples of a coefficient of friction. Here's our first example. Steel on ice, as in a hockey skate on a frozen pond like this, is going to have a coefficient of friction. That's equal to about 0 0.03. There are no units for the coefficients of friction. So this is a very, very low value, and that's why skates are able to slide across ice very easily. Now for rubber on asphalt, like as in a car tire uh, on the road, we're going to have a coefficient of friction equal to about 0 0.7. Again, no units, but you can see that this number is a lot greater than 0 0.03. And so there's much more friction between rubber and asphalt. Now these are numbers that you can just look up in databases. You can find your, uh, probably in your physics textbook, a bunch, a table of all these different values. Again, they're going to be constants and they won't change. Okay, so let's try calculating the force of friction in a certain situation. So here we have a car on asphalt. Now the mass of this car is 2,000 kilograms and the coefficient of friction for rubber on asphalt is 0.7. So what is the force of friction? Well our equation looks like this. So force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now the normal force is going to be exactly equal to the force of gravity. So I could say that the normal force is equal to F sub G and that is equal to, just like any force, it's mass times acceleration. So we have the mass of the object times a special constant acceleration called the acceleration due to gravity. That lowercase g is equal to 9.81. Okay, I've plugged things into my equation here. And I've done this step right here, mass times acceleration due to gravity, all together here to calculate the normal force. So this capital M is this stuff right here. Um, inside these square brackets, which I didn't close. There we go. 
And so I also included the units here, kilograms per mass and meters per second squared for acceleration. These are the SI units, and they have to be in SI units. Here's our coefficient of friction. Again, there's no units for that. So the force of friction between the rubber and the asphalt for this car is going to be equal to 13,700 newtons. So in the winter time, you're going to have less friction. Let's look at that situation. So here is a road that's completely iced over. Same mass of the car, but the coefficient of friction for rubber on ice is only 0.15. So we can see that it's lower than rubber on asphalt because ice has less friction. So let's calculate the force of friction for our car that's traveling on an icy road. Again, our equation is the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And I'm calculating normal force here on this one equation, mass times acceleration. And so the force of friction between the car uh, that's traveling on ice here would be equal to 2,940 newtons. So that's quite a bit less when we compare that to the force of friction on rubber and asphalt. Okay, finally, there are two types of friction. And so far, we've been working with moving friction. Moving friction is known as kinetic friction, and it's only used if an object is moving along a surface. The other type of friction is called static friction, and static friction is when an object is stationary on a surface. Both of these use the exact same equation, the equation that we've already learned. The only difference in these two equations is that the coefficient is going to be different depending on if it's kinetic friction or static friction. The way that we indicate the difference is we usually put a subscript k next to the coefficient for kinetic friction, and we could put a little subscript k there next to the force of friction so we know we're calculating that. And then for static friction, we could just put a little subscript S to indicate it's going to be static friction. Now the big difference between static friction and kinetic friction is that static friction is always going to be greater than kinetic friction. And so it's going to be more difficult to break a object free of the attraction with the surface. Uh, so you must apply a greater friction to get an object moving. Once it's moving, you can apply slightly less force because the kinetic friction is going to be a little bit lower. Okay, one last thing. Friction does not depend on temperature, speed, or surface area of the object. That means the force of friction is going to remain the same no matter at what speed the object is moving at, uh, no matter what the temperature is, and no matter how much of the surface of the object is actually touching um, the other object or the other surface. Again, when we look at the equation for calculating friction, uh, we know that the force of friction is going to be equal to the coefficient times the normal force. None of these three uh, play a factor in that equation. And that is friction.